Right, so welcome everybody to the second webinar around the book Rebuild that Jack and I have written. The first webinar, we came out of that, both of us feeling enormously excited and you know, thrilled at the depth of conversation that emerged in that meeting. So the, the planned flow is that we'll spend about five minutes for the intro. So in about a minute now, I'm gonna stop talking about that. We're going to spend around about 15 minutes between Jack and myself talking about the case for an all capitals, all stakeholders in corporation and why that's essential. We will then spend another 20 minutes in breakouts. So a couple of words from Jack and myself on, you know, most of you have probably already taken a look at the book Rebuild, have maybe even read part of it, and you'll have recognized that one of the central themes of Rebuild is that if we want to rebuild, in particular, if we want to rebuild from the paradigm we have to a completely new paradigm, we need a combination of, on the one hand, we need new lenses so that we can see things differently to the way that we see them now. But secondly, we need new ways of building, new building blocks, new tools to build. And a good example of that from the world of building cathedrals or towers, the Ulm Cathedral, was the tallest building that could be built using traditional stone construction methodologies. And it's at 162 meters high. It's almost impossible to go any higher than that. Maybe 170 meters, maybe fractionally above that if you do really careful stone construction. But there's no way that you could ever get to the height of the Eiffel Tower if you try to build it using stone. The only way you can get significantly above the 162 meters of the Ulm Cathedral and get into the 324 meters height of the Eiffel is by looking at construction through a completely new lens and using completely new building blocks to build. And this story is one that nature has learned time and again, that humanity has learned time and again, if you want to build something fundamentally new, you need fundamentally new ways of building. You cannot build the new paradigm using the tools and construction materials of the old paradigm. So the new paradigm that we have coming towards us now is a paradigm of whether you call it stakeholder capitalism, circular economy, regenerative economy, whatever you call it, it requires a fundamentally new paradigm. Now, in this new paradigm, one absolute is going to continue to be true in this new paradigm. And it's something that has remained true for thousands of years, namely that human nature does not change anywhere near as fast as the technology we have to do things with changes. There's relatively little difference between how individual humans and groups of humans react, in particular how we react under times of stress and change to the, a thousand years ago, 2000 years ago, 3000 years ago. So any approach that requires all human beings to have the same values, that there are no people who are acting purely in their self interest, no narcissists, etc. in the mix, any approach like that is fragile. And the best we found across centuries, millennia of civilization to enable something stable to emerge given that human beings are what they are 
is summarized in that top line, you know, the idea that there's no taxation without representation. If you're going to tax the citizens of a country, they need to be engaged in governance. And what that means is that to have something stable across the huge diversity of different needs, human natures, et cetera, we need to balance power, both the power to and the power over. We need to be completely inclusive of all concepts of value, all kinds of values and all kinds of needs. And we need to do that in a way that is fully aligned. In particular, in the world of business, it means we need to align all of culture, structures, processes towards the kind of outcomes we want. So if we want to build stakeholder capitalism, if we want to build a circular economy, a regenerative economy, a well-being economy, any of these, we need to build it in ways that are anti-fragile. In other words, they work with human nature as it is, full of tension, conflict, and all of the other aspects of human nature that we know so well. And they derive their strength, their adaptability from human nature as it is, without any attempt to, or any assumption that it will work when human beings all think in a certain way, all have a certain set of values, all behave in a certain way. So that has led us to what we have looked at as how do you incorporate to enable that to happen? And we've, we've fixed at the incorporation level, at least in what we're discussing here, because it's in the incorporation of a company that you have something that is the first layer that is big enough to include all of the stakeholders. And yet, and, and in that sense, it's a microcosm of the entire economy. At the same time, it's small enough to actually work with, and it's the building unit that the rest of the economy is built out of. So if we get incorporation right for human nature as it is, and right in that it's inherently able to deliver stakeholder capitalism, a wellness economy, a circular economy, a regenerative economy, etc. There are certain key characteristics that we believe need to be true. The first one is that it should include in the power structures, in the governance of the company, all of the stakeholders that are engaged and all of the capitals that are engaged. Only then are you able to ensure that no stakeholder group can dominate over another stakeholder group. In other words, a group of people or nature is not a viable stakeholder unless they have the power to protect themselves and the power to get things done that needs to be done from their perspective. Such a company also needs to grow all of the capitals including financial capital. In everything I'm saying, there's a, there's a tendency sometimes to hear what I'm saying as being antagonistic towards financial capital. Financial capital is a core building block of what we're doing. It represents part of what we need in the kind of economy that will build houses, build, manufacture clothes, furniture, things like that. Thirdly, this kind of incorporation needs to scale. In other words, the company itself must be a viable stakeholder at the next level of scale. And that means that the company must be free, in particular free of being treated as the property of one or more stakeholder groups. And any incorporation that is treated as if it is property is fragile if we want to build any of these kinds of economies. 
The decision perspective needs to span from now through to centuries in the future, not just the next quarter. And if we get all of that right, it needs to be one that will naturally form ecosystems and circles. So that's a, a bit of an intro from me. Jack, would you like to bring in a few thoughts at this point? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I would just like to begin with um, just to welcome everybody. It's really, really nice to visit with you all. And this particular moment is, this is something of a jubilation. It's very, very emotional. Well, this is, you know, it's something that we worked very, very uh, arduously. We put together a lot of work for over a, a number of years, and it's it's good to see the fruition of our work, and it's good to be able to share this with all of you. And I just want to say welcome, and it's very, very um, exciting, and it's also very humbling just to get this to be with you right now. Um. I really like what Brian put together. I think it gives us the succinct uh, capitalization of what we would like to do and the essence of our book. And I would just like to emphasize that it's what we're, our overall goal is to get from A to B. And right now, A is not working. It's only working for maybe just a couple people or a couple groups. And B, as we envision, will be much more provisioning uh, for everyone. But the difficulty is from getting to A, uh, getting from A to B. And even though we mentioned uh, the beneficial aspects of B, we also devote a lot of the book to looking at the obstacles and the way that we can surmount uh, these obstacles. And I think the way we wrote the book, it gives us a very, very uh, meticulous recipe or self-developing and in ways that we can recognize the obstacles that are out there and then also be provisioning uh, for all of us. And we also have to remember, you know, when you look at the economic system that's out there, this is an economic system that doesn't just rain down from the above. This is something that all of us do create. And maybe the lenses and the stories that we've been used to does not give us that advantage that this is all of ours. And we need to ask, hey, what is it that we want? What is it that we're not getting? And we also have to realize that every one of us is interconnected with each other. And this is the essence of the, the, the notion of the stakeholder system. As a business, as an economic system, um, we, we do have to recognize that the, there's the existence of stakeholders and everyone is relevant. And let me just give an example of when both of us were done with the book, we were in South Africa and we were relaxing on a tech looking at I, what I think is one of the most beautiful mountain ranges anywhere. And we began writing, uh, writing the acknowledgements. And this was exciting, but it was also difficult. And the essence of this was we were basically saying to the world, our book, there's a lot of stakeholders in the book. It wasn't just us writing, even though you know we're the authors, but I was influenced by lots of people. I will be influenced by lots of people, as was Graham. And we recognized this, that uh, this entity, which is this fruition of years of work, um, it is produced by a multiple of stakeholders. And I think we, we, we recognize that. And looking at our economic system, I think this is what is missing. If you look in the dictionary definition of capitalism, you basically read something like this. Uh, capitalism is a system where the means of production are owned by individuals or businesses in order to maximize profit. But what they mean by this is, it is a narrow, narrow focus, looking at only financial capital and ignoring the other capitals. And what we need to do is to recognize that in each entity, whether it's writing a book, whether it's raising a family, whether it's running a business or an economic system, there are multiple stakeholders. 
And I think that's maybe the, the, the main provision of our book is recognizing this and putting together a recipe that engages all of us. It is very, very critical. The existing system does not work. And I think that's, that should be obvious. I mean, it is obvious with me in the US that our, our nation is a mess right now. We need something different. And one of the reasons why it isn't working is the exclusion of all stakeholders. And this is something that I think is absolutely necessary uh, as we do move forward. Uh, do you think we need a definition of a stakeholder? I mean, we know what it is, but you know, would that be beneficial maybe just to give a, I mean, it's a very, very simple definition. It's just stakeholder is an entity with an interest in the existence of another entity. Now, what do we mean by interest? That, that's a little bit amorphous, but you know, that's the essence of a stakeholder. And something else about stakeholders is that, you know, maybe tradition from 19th century way of economic thinking is that the, the, the boundaries are rigid. I'm a stakeholder in this aspect, but I'm very, very different from another stakeholder. But the way we look at stakeholders, the boundaries are very, very amorphous and they're fluid. One could fall into another. And I think that's also very, very crucial is that, you know, maybe the traditional, your mother's way of thinking of a stakeholder might be different with the way that we're looking at it. You know, we, we have a, as the, this notion of fluidity and the amorphous boundaries. Daniel. I have a question of curiosity. Uh, if anyone here has read uh, a fairly new book by Janusz Varoufakis, which is called Another Now, if you're familiar with this. Um, I have not uh, read his most recent Mm -hmm. Oh, I have not read his most recent book, but I've read uh, just about all of his others. Mm -hmm. uh, and because for me, I'm, re I'm reading this and I'm also reading Rebuild at the same time. And it is another now is a novel, but it is a novel set in 2025, where it's basically two. They find uh, someone living in this now, finds a wormhole to communicate with another now, which was split after 2008 and uh, talking with their alter egos. And it's, it's a very interesting thing. And it's, uh, I mean, basically the things you described, they are, they are kind of, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, I really recommend it as, as a addition to, to rebuild, to, to see how fictionally it could be in, in another now. That, 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 that's interesting. Um, I will have to take a look at it. Cause as I mentioned, I've read all his other books. So Jack and I plan to continue running this group once a month. And next time, the theme that we are thinking of focusing on is why do most statistically trained people make bad investment decisions? And what can you do instead to take good decisions? And that's covered in section 6.4. So please take a look at that. That will be on March the 30th, same time as this program. Um, you can find the sign up point over there. And if you want to know more about this, well, our the, the way that we put food on the table for ourselves and a roof over our head is through our workshops, which span a wide range, both workshops for individuals on how to develop new lenses to look at the world through how to transform yourself so that you're able to embrace new ways of working as well as workshops and courses on how to set up a fair shares commons company and a range of others so please do take a look there also really important we've written this book with the idea that it will be helpful to lots of people so the more people know about this book and read it, the better. So please do put a book review online, share it widely, watch and share our other videos and podcasts. And in particular, for somebody who either has a very limited amount of money 
or people who want to taste it first before they buy it, remember our the PDF of our book is available to download for free from our website up there. So you know, please do share it with everybody. And if you are willing to support Jack and myself in getting this the next level of work done and getting the marketing going and everything, we would be enormously grateful for any sponsorship you can give us. So we are bang on the half past point. Um, I will, in a moment after Jack has spoken, we'll bring this to a formal end, but I'll stay online afterwards for any general questions and chatting. Jack, some last words from you. Uh, absolutely, and my last words too have to be brief, and the reason why I do it teach, but uh, I would just like to mention that writing the book was very, very exciting for both of us. It was arduous, but it was very exciting, and then getting the book published was also very exciting. But then meeting all of you and participating uh, with you, I think is even more exciting. You know, it just makes me very emotional, but it's, it's really nice just reaching out with all of you, and I really, really enjoyed meeting you, and I I uh, just just to hope to keep it up. Wonderful. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, everybody, yeah. for joining in. It's been grand having you all here. And as Jack says, this is this is why we wrote the book, is this kind of conversation growing this kind of a movement. Wish you all a fantastic day. Hope to see you all next month, same time, same place. And cheers to everybody. And I'm still around for those who want to chat.